To the ancients, it was a god. To us, it's the powerhouse at the heart of the solar system, a blazing colossus generating heat and light and life, the sun. Its story begins over five billion years ago. A giant star is dying. It explodes as a supernova, the shockwave blasting through space toward a cloud of hydrogen. The cloud collapses, forming rings of gas and dust. At the core, a nuclear furnace fires up. Our sun is born. So too, the nine planets of the solar system. This empire of the sun is like a bubble. It's called the heliosphere. Within, the sun reigns supreme. Beyond is interstellar space. For the sun is a star, and as such, a beacon of energy. It heats and lights our world. All life depends on it. The power we generate from fossil fuel is stored sunlight, energy that nurtured plants millions of years ago. So what is the sun, this local star of ours? Deep inside, at 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, it's a nuclear reactor turning hydrogen into helium. Each second, the sun loses four million tons of mass, matter that's unleashed as energy. Slice open the sun, and we see the path of that energy. From the white-hot core, it takes one million years to reach the surface. It takes just eight and a half minutes for that same energy to speed the 93 million miles to planet Earth, energy we call sunlight. By analyzing its spectrum, especially the pattern of dark bands, astronomers discover the composition of the sun. It's 73% hydrogen, 24% helium, plus a sprinkling of heavier elements. This is the solar surface, the yellow photosphere. Temperature, about 10,000 degrees. And above it, the fireworks of the red chromosphere. We look down on the photosphere, gas boiling up to the surface, cooler gas descending, each bubble the size of Texas. Not a sunflower, but a sunspot. Such blemishes periodically pock the sun. They're cooler than the surrounding photosphere. This one could swallow Earth. A group of sunspots they can grow in 10 days, fade in two weeks. Here, the rotating sun has a spotty face. At other times, it's spotless. Sunspots indicate magnetic activity. They show where force lines burst from the sun and where they re-enter. The sun is like a garden sprinkler swirling vast magnetic loops. Every 11 years, the magnetic poles flip. Midway between flips, the sun is at magnetic maximum. Its force lines generated by gases just beneath the surface. The surface spins at different speeds. At the equator, it rotates once in 26 days. At the poles, it takes 37. This tangles and distorts the magnetic field. The result is a seething ocean of energy, our star unmasked. Within the chromosphere, 
the inner atmosphere of the sun, arcs of gas sweep around magnetic force lines. Prominences leap into space, forming arches 30,000 miles high. Eruptions spew from the granulated surface. Prominences are surges of flaming gas triggered by magnetic releases deep below. These are major prominences, jets licking up to 60,000 miles. Tiny Earth is set in to scale. But flares are more violent. They eject with the energy of 10 million hydrogen bombs. A flare blasts ripples across the solar face. The outer atmosphere of the sun, the corona, is visible at a total eclipse when the moon obscures the solar disk. The corona is hot, nearly four million degrees, and it dances a magnetic jig. Convulsions on the solar surface shape the activity above. Great ejections from the corona are fueled by massive flares below. This ejection is so big that material speeds millions of miles to buffet the space probe SOHO. As the shockwave hits the craft, it's spattered with electrified solar particles. Such particles are continuously emitted by the sun. They're the solar wind. Around the polar regions of Earth, the particles react with our upper atmosphere. They create the lights of the aurorae. The sun has secrets, like what makes the corona so hot. At the solar core, it's 27 million degrees. At the surface, just 10,000. Yet out in the corona, it soars again to nearly 4 million. The cause may be magnetic energy. And we know the sun throbs, but we're not sure why. Its deep oscillations are picked up by SOHO. They build a sound picture of the interior, and they reveal how the sun changes shape. SOHO, which is operated jointly by America and Europe, is revealing more and more of what ticks beneath that churning exterior. It's discovered, for instance, that jet streams of gas whip through the sun, the most powerful just beneath the surface. And there are tornadoes the size of Earth. They whirl near the poles at 300,000 miles an hour. Five billion years from now, the sun runs short of hydrogen. It starts to expand. From a diameter of 870,000 miles, it bloats to 200 times that size, a red giant. The nearest planets vaporize. Mercury, Venus, Earth. Then begin the convulsions. Like cosmic smoke rings, the sun puffs off a series of nebulae. The white-hot core is exposed. It collapses to the size of Earth, a white dwarf. Of the inner planets, only Mars survives in lonely orbit. Our sun expires as a dead, black dwarf.